Olympics on the lake. And to this Ash Wednesday service, we're going to begin on the top of page one. Bless the Lord who forgives all our sins. His mercy endures forever. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, you hate nothing you have made and forgive the sins of all who are penitent. Create and make in us new and contrite hearts that we worthily lamenting our sins and acknowledging our wretchedness may obtain of you the God of all mercy, perfect remission and forgiveness through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Joel. Blow the trumpet in Zion, Sound the alarm on my holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble, for the day of the Lord is coming. It is near. A day of darkness and gloom, a day of clouds and thick darkness. Like blackness spread upon the mountains, a great and powerful army comes. Their like has never been from of old, nor never will be again from them in ages to come. Yet even now, says the Lord, return to me with all your heart with fasting, with weeping, and with mourning. Rend your hearts and not your clothing. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger, and abounding in steadfast love, and relents from punishing. Who knows whether he will not return and relent, and leave a blessing behind him, a grain offering and a drink offering for the Lord your God. Blow the trumpet in Zion, sanctify a fast, call a solemn assembly, gather the people, sanctify the congregation, assemble the aged, gather the children, even infants at the breast. Let the bridegroom leave his room and the bride her canopy. Between the vestibule and the altar, let the priests, the ministers of the Lord, weep. Let them say, spare your people, O Lord, and do not make your heritage a mockery a byword among the nations. Why should it be said among the peoples? Where is their God? The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please join me in reciting Psalm 103, verses 8 through 14. We will re recite responsively by whole verse. The Lord is full of compassion and mercy, slow to anger and of great kindness. He will not always accuse us, nor will he keep his anger forever. He has not dealt with us according to our sins, nor rewarded us according to our wickedness. For as the heavens are high above the earth, so is his mercy great upon those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our sins from us. As a father cares for his children, so does the Lord care for those who fear him. For he himself knows whereof we are made. He remembers that we are but dust.
The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said, Beware of practicing your piety before others in order to see, be seen by them, for then you have no reward from your Father in heaven. So whenever you give alms, do not sound a trumpet before you as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, so that they may be praised by others. Truly I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you give alms, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that your alms may be done in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. And whenever you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and at the street corners, so that they may be seen by others. Truly I tell you, they have received their reward. But whenever you pray, go into your room and shut the door and pray to your Father who is in secret. And your Father who sees in secret will reward you. And whenever you fast, do not look dismal like the hypocrites, for they disfigure their faces as, so as to show others that they are fasting. Truly I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you fast, put oil on your head and wash your face, so that your fasting may be seen not by others, but by your Father who is in secret. And your Father who sees in secret will reward you. Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth, where moth and rust consume and where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust consumes, and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Well, again, welcome to Ash Wednesday. Welcome to the beginning of our Lenten journey. Now, this Ash Wednesday is a little bit different, I think, in many ways, because we're not together in the way we have been before. And that has to do with COVID more than anything. We do what's right to protect each other. And this year, that's opened up a doorway for us to think about this particular day and what we do on Ash Wednesday slightly differently. And I think it speaks to the gospel. You know, I've always thought it's interesting when I read this gospel story that tells us to beware of practicing our piety before others. How many of us in years past go home, go out into the community, go out into the world with these big black crosses on our forehead that simply state, I've been to Ash Wednesday, have you? Now, of course, many of us don't think of it that way. We don't pretend to try to hold it over people but that can be somewhat disconcerting. And it is a slight departure from the tradition that led to Ash Wednesday. Now to be fair and clear that Ash Wednesday is not something that existed for a long time in the early church. And we first get a sense of it in a monastic community when they just put the mark on their foreheads and then the monks would go into seclusion. So they weren't in front of each other practicing their piety. But really the most common tradition that happened really around the 1000s, 1100, was the sprinkling of ashes. And why I think this is important and why this helps us in our Lenten journey is because when we sprinkle ashes on, we remember that phrase that we say every Ash Wednesday, remember that you were dust and to dust you shall return. Now, why would that be important? Here's why I think that's important. If you'll go with me to the, a little bit further in our prayer book, to the burial liturgy, not a place we like to go often, but we make a statement in that burial liturgy towards the end of it that says, even at the grave, even in the dust, we sing our song. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. 
Now, some of you will say, why in the world did you just say that word during Ash Wednesday? Because it's important. It's important we remember that even when we are dust, that the God who created us, the God who loves us, the God who cares for us, allows us to sing that song of great Christian joy. That death is not the end, that the dust that we were formed out of, the dust that our mortal body will return to is not the end for us. And when Ash Wednesday started, that was the point, was to remind all Christians that even in death, we get to sing our Christian Easter hymn. So my brothers and sisters, what an appropriate way to mark our Lenten journey. What an appropriate way for us to give back, to connect with the God who loves us and the God who created us, the God who gives us life and hope. And that is what we do on Ash Wednesday. We get into the, the moment with God. We fast, we, we self-reflect. We don't beat ourselves up. We don't hate on ourselves. We merely find the places in our life where we have fallen short of the glory of God and we dig in. Now I'll say, I don't have enough time to unpack fasting in this sermon, but I do wanna point something that I rarely do, but I think it's important. This particular week on, on Monday, February 15th, just a couple days ago, and my podcast with the Reverend Bryn Bond, we did a deep dive into fasting, into Christian fasting. I wanna encourage that to you. You can get to that on our website to listen to that as you think about your Lenten journey and your Lenten disciplines. Now we say many things in that podcast and none of them are meant to stress you out or make you think your Lenten practice is somewhat less than somebody else's. We merely wanted to point out the depth and the spirituality that fasting can bring to us. But what I want to say to you today is on this day, this first day of Lent, we must remember what we were made for and what we were made out of and who made us. And we must commit to the work of not judging others, of not beating others down, of not destroying relationships, but building them back up and starting with the most important relationship. And that is ours with God. During this Lenten time, I want us to really dig in during this time of separation and isolation, this long marathon that we wish would be over. I want us to put that aside for the next 40 days. I don't want us to dig in and connect with God, pray together, love together, hold each other and fast away from those things that we know are taking us down the path that is pulling us away from God. Let those things go. Now, I want to come back to the ashes. Now, some of you, and in just a minute, I'm going to invite to sprinkle and or make the sign of the cross on your forehead. Now, I talked a lot about sprinkling. Let me talk about the sign of the cross. It's not wrong. It's not bad. It came around in the, night, in the 20th century, around the time of a, of a big liturgical renewal known as Vatican II. And when that liturgical renewal, what they wanted to do with the Ash Wednesday liturgy is connect the sign of the cross to our baptismal covenant, to our baptismal vows, our call to discipleship. And from a boy from South Georgia and a priest, the old country priest, ain't nothing wrong with that. So there is nothing wrong in a few minutes if I invite you in your house to put that sign of uh, the cross on your forehead and, and be a part of that journey. That's the beauty of this year is we've got both traditions before us the development of one and the original purpose of the other. And I wanna encourage you, no matter what you choose to do, to remember what this is all about, what the dust really means, whether it's in the sign of a cross or it's sprinkled on the back of your hands. It is a reminder that we are dust and to dust we will return. But even in the dust, God loves us and God gives us hope and life so that we can sing our Christian hymn, amen. Now, before we get into the uh, invitation to a Holy Lent, we have to do some important work before we officially start the season of Lent, which starts when I read this invitation. We need to bury our Alleluias. And again, there's that word that many of you don't want me to say on Ash Wednesday, but we've said it because it's important. This is a word that's gonna disappear 
for this season of Lent. Let me get it right here for you. Ha, there it is. We're going to bury this in the altar. And it's important that we bury this because we put this away until we get back to Easter. It's not because we can't be joyful. It's not because we can't be happy or we have to be sad. It's because this word is set aside for a special celebration. And we have a lot of work to do before we get to that celebration. So I want to encourage you to let this word go for the next 40 days. And know that when we get together on Easter Sunday and whatever that looks like, because we've done the hard work of Lent, we've done the self-reflection, we've done the repentance, we've built relationships back with each other and with God, most importantly, that when we say this word, it will mean a whole lot. And what better place for us to put this than in our own altar? So this word, my brothers and sisters, is now going to live in our altar until we pull it out on the day of resurrection in 40 plus days from now. It's a little bit more than 40 when you count the Sundays, but this will come back to life in a way it's never had before because we're gonna do the work of Lent. So let us do that. And now let us continue with the invitation to a Holy Lent. Dear people of God, the first Christians observed with great devotion the days of our Lord's passion and resurrection. And it became the custom of the church to prepare for them by a season of penitence and fasting. This season of Lent provided a time in which converts to the faith were prepared for holy baptism. It was also a time when those who because of notorious sins had been separated from the body of the faithful were reconciled by penitence and forgiveness and restored to the fellowship of the church. Thereby the whole congregation was put in mind of the message of pardon and absolution set forth in the gospel of our savior and of the need which all Christians continually have to renew their repentance and faith. I invite you therefore in the name of the church to the observance of a holy Lent by self-examination and repentance, by prayer, fasting, and self-denial, and by reading and meditating on God's holy word, and to make a right beginning of repentance, and as a mark of our mortal nature, let us now kneel before the Lord, our maker and redeemer. Now we'll say a prayer over the ashes. Almighty God, you have created us out of the dust of the earth. Grant that these ashes may be a sign to us of our mortality and penitence, that we may remember that, th that it is only by your gracious gift that we are given everlasting life through Jesus Christ, our savior. Amen. Now we're gonna move to the imposition of ashes. And for all of you joining us online, Hopefully you were able to pick up a Lenten bag that has some ashes contained in them. Those ashes have been blessed by Father Jim and myself to be as we hope to be a sign of your penitential journey and your entry point into Lent. And as I said in my sermon, you have two choices of what you can do with your loved ones and family gathered together with you, worshiping with you. One is you can take those ashes and merely have somebody else hold their hands out like this and sprinkle the ashes on top of their palms as you say that phrase, Remember that you are dust and to dust you shall return. Or if you would like to make the sign of the cross on their forehead, you can do that. Those, that is not just reserved for clergy. So I invite you now to take a moment and spread those ashes out amongst your loved ones and friends that are worshiping with you. And during your time, you will see a reflection video uh, just to give you space to do this and to reflect. So when you finish, just join us back and reflect with us and hear these words about Ash Wednesday and about repentance.
from dust we've come and dust we are and shall return be still my soul and let it go just let it go glory to god glory to god in the highest glory to god glory to god in the highest naked we came and shall return into the grave be still Have mercy on me, O God, according to your loving kindness. In your great compassion, blot out my offenses. Wash me through and through from my wickedness, and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my transgressions, and my sin is ever before me. Against you only have I sinned, and done what is evil in your sight. And so you are justified when you speak and upright in your judgment. Indeed, I have been wicked from my birth, a sinner from my mother's womb. For behold, you took for truth deep within me and will make me understand wisdom secretly. Purge me from my sin and I shall be pure. Wash me and I shall be clean indeed. Make me hear of joy and gladness that the body you have broken may rejoice. Hide your face from my sins and blot out all my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence, and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Give me the joy of your saving help again, and sustain me with your bountiful spirit. I shall teach your ways to the wicked, and sinners shall return to you. Deliver me from death, O God, and my tongue shall sing of your righteousness, O God of my salvation. Open my lips, O Lord, and my mouth shall proclaim your praise. 
Had you desired it, I would have offered sacrifice, but you take no delight in burnt offerings. The sacrifice of God is a troubled spirit, a broken and contrite heart, O oh God, you will not despise. Most holy and merciful Father, we confess to you and to one another and to the whole communion of saints in heaven and on earth that we have sinned by our own fault in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart and mind and strength. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We have not forgiven others as we have been forgiven. Have mercy on us, Lord. We have been deaf to your call to serve as Christ served us. We have not been true to the mind of Christ. We have grieved your Holy Spirit. Have mercy on us, Lord. We confess to you, Lord, all our past unfaithfulness, the pride, hypocrisy, and impatience of our lives. We confess to you, Lord, our self-indulgent appetites and ways and our exploitation of other people. We confess to you, Lord, our anger at our own frustration and our envy of those more fortunate than ourselves. We confess to you, Lord, our intemperate love of worldly goods and comforts and our dishonesty in daily life and work. We confess to you, Lord, our negligence in prayer and worship and our failure to commend the faith that is in us. We confess to you, Lord, accept our repentance, Lord, for the wrongs we have done for our blindness to human need and suffering and our indifference to injustice and cruelty. Accept our repentance, Lord. For all false judgments, for uncharitable thoughts towards our neighbors, and for our prejudice and contempt toward those who differ from us. Accept our repentance, Lord. For our waste and pollution of your creation and our lack of concern for those who come after us. Accept our repentance, Lord. Restore us, good Lord, and let your anger depart from us. Favorably hear us, for your mercy is great. Accomplish in us the work of your salvation. That we may show forth your glory in the world. By the cross and passion of your Son, our Lord, bring us with all your saints to the joy of his resurrection. Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who desires not the death of sinners, but rather that they may turn from their wickedness and live, has given power and commandment to his ministers to declare and pronounce to his people, being penitent, the absolution and remission of their sins. He pardons and absolves all those who truly repent and with sincere hearts believe his holy gospel. There, therefore, we beseech him to grant us true repentance and his Holy Spirit, that those things may please him which we do on this day, and that the rest of our life hereafter may be pure and holy, so that the last we may come to his eternal joy through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. My brothers and sisters, the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you.
Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.